and Tony's going to do the Apple II Roadshow. Thanks, Tony. Alrighty. A little bit of fun here first. Woo! Jeez. Yeah, actually, this is going to be kind of cool because you see, thousand dollars, and I never used. And uh, well, okay, so. Is that how you pay to get here? Okay. New, never used. Great, cool, look. It's been out of the box. One picture. That's it. Only one. What's back here in the corner? Looks like smashed styrofoam. Mouse sitting in there sideways. Cables wadded up, just shoved in there. Yeah, that don't look good. The disk drives have two slightly different changes of yellow. Yeah. The bag certainly isn't wrapped around that monitor anymore. Yeah, never used. <laughs> yeah, the box might have never been used once they took the computer out of it to put something else in. They might have found the box in the attic. Just goofy stuff like this out there that, that makes you wonder. What? Just to let everyone know, the shipping costs listed. Blah, 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 whatever. Here. Everything included in the picture. Yeah. Depending upon where you live, the weight of the item changes. Yep. It gets older because if it has to go through Cambodia, it gets waterlogged. Yeah. Okay, so. With that. Then we have the opposite of extremes. I don't know that that book is worth $750. I've got four copies. <laughs> Although, I'd love to have another one. I've got one. Hmm. I'd actually scan the thing if I had another one to take apart, because I've got one that I don't want to take apart. <clears throat> but I'm getting, an I'm getting an 11 by 17 scanner. I'd scan the thing. Wow. Put it online. But anyway, 750 bucks. It's never been opened. These were given out to dealers after, on the 10-year anniversary of Apple. I've actually never seen one on eBay, because I don't really look. So. Just happened to come this morning. I wish eBay showed you the offers. Of course, that would be kind of counter to the seller, but I think it'd be cool. Uh, I think you ought to reveal the offers when the thing closes, not sold. Yeah. Yeah, they should. And now we have new old stock auto switching video display card, 80 column. Okay, I'm looking at that. I'm going, well, I don't see anything auto switching about that at all. In fact, it looks like a rearranged Videx video term clone with, uh, actually, no, I take that back. It's got this thing on here. Okay, never mind. I'll bite. But it's a uh, new in box, or I should say new old stock, they say, which usually means it's been sitting around for a while. And uh, may or may not work. However, looking at this, this does have this does show some hope that it probably hasn't been used in a while, because if you look at the rubber band around the cable, it rotted away. Probably. It's rotted away. <laughs> it's never been removed. At least it's, it was. It hasn't been removed in a long time. It might have been re-put back. But see the way that cable's wadded up there? It actually kind of looks like factory. 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 It's got it's the look to it. You can never do anything. So they kind of picked it up out of the box. These usually came out in a cylindrical type cardboard box. Yeah. But you slide them out. Maybe all smushed, stuffed on the uh, on the on the foam. The foam rubber is legit. It probably isn't even centered in the box. It's all shoved in there. Maybe they pulled it out, set it on the table, took a picture. So yeah, I can believe that. And that's the kind of clues and things I look for when somebody says, "Yeah, this is new in box." Unlike that that uh, <laughs> 2GS system that shows me wadded up cables just sitting there, a mouse on its side. Look where the cable is. It's underneath. The cable isn't like that. The mouse was in a long bag. Why is there an ASCII price tag? It's, it's, it's sold for $1,000. Look, based somebody, on... Somebody paid $1,000 for something that's not really even new. Because they taped the bag on it. Okay, well, actually, let's see here. A lot of new things. One, two... Three, Oh, it, does, it tells me how many bidders, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm it's looking at four bidders. Four bidders. So four people, so four people chomping each other for it. 
Do we have one more friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then one person. Oh, man, well, the guy that got it, the guy that got it came in later. The experience sat around for a while, and then walked on it near the end. Yeah. The experience one dropped out before. Uh, Said, "Forget this." Yeah, this isn't worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what that top bid could have been. You know, it just means he won it by the increment. It's only it went for a thousand fifty dollars. I could have got it for thousand seventy five. How do you know that? That guy could have put two grand on the thing. Yeah, you don't know what his top bid. Look at the marijuana in it, and they'd know it. He knows it. Maybe he knows it. You know, <laughs> maybe it came over from Mexico, and it's a it's a rouse to get something smuggled in. You never know what's you never know what's what's on there. Monitor two, okay. That's rare. I was going to say, those are rarely hard to make yeah. any of them. <laughs> yeah. Macintosh. What? Uh, Neat. Monitor 2 Macintosh? Yeah. I don't even know what he's yeah. Well, if it was the original Macintosh, or I should say Hackintosh SE, I used to have a long, long time ago. It might very well be because I took an SE board, a Packard Bell power supply, stuck it in a 2 plus case, made a TTL to, com to com uh, composite converter, had an Amdeck 300A amber yeah. monitor sitting on top of it. And the keyboard mounted in the hole. It looked like a two plus, except when you turned it on, it went bing and booted up into System Six. So, or they're just using the Macintosh name to get additional to get additional people hit. Yeah, yeah. Exactly so what they're doing. They're new in box dash Macintosh. No, no, the no. box has been resealed. Yeah, and it's sitting on top of the box. It's sitting on top of the box. It is no longer new in the box now. Where is the bag it came in? See that cable is nicely unwound. It doesn't have any nice great kinks in it. Oh, it looks like yeah, there's a stain on the right more. side of the monitor too. Yeah, and there's a bit of there's a bit of, of uh, fondling on that monitor. Burn in spot. And then we've got the back <laughs> down here on the lower edge. That's not styrofoam bits because there shouldn't be styrofoam bits there. It should have been bagged. Yeah, it should have been bagged, right? Yeah. So yeah, new in box. Okay, cool. It's newly placed back in the box in the last two years. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Even the manual. Come on, that's been read in the John a couple times. Let's go. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, great. It's a monitor manual. <laughs> plug it in, turn it on. But where do you plug in the cable? On your Macintosh. No. <laughs> Is that what that hole in the back that's got the picture of the monitor is for? Okay. Right now, what was it going for? Oh, yeah. Sold for one night. Sold for one night. No, this is another monitor. Wow. Now we've got here. Okay. Vintage Apple, Apple Color Composite Monitor 2, 2E, new in the box. Nice new in the box. But nicely yellow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice this is, a, no, no, no. This is an absolutely limited edition. I guarantee it. I've never seen one like it. This is really cool. Two this is a two tone monitor. <laughs> this matches both systems. If you've got a platinum or a beige, either one, this one matches it. 100% guaranteed. And by the way, it's even been. It's even been to the bayou and back. It's probably survived Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> yeah. That's a limited edition Katrina model. So <laughs> the question is, if it's new in the box, was it in the box when that happened? <laughs> I didn't know Apple used uh, Mayflower Alliance moving tape. Yeah. Come on, guys. Flooded only uh, once. Yeah, we can do better than this. Look, the back of the monitor is even yet a different color. Look, it's, 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 it's not sad that people post that on eBay. It's sad that people bid on it. Yeah. Yeah. Someone That's bid 100 bucks, 200 bucks for this thing, and they get it and they're happy with it. I guess it's really sad. Up for auction is a super rare new open box Apple Color Composite Monitor 2. I only own three. Super rare. Yeah, it is. It really is super rare. I told you. That's a two tone monitor. There's not one other, there's not another one like it. I'm sure you're right. <laughs> there's some yellowing here and there in the unit, but not bad. There's some yellowing here. Not bad. It's it's no, it's not bad. It's uniformly done. Yes. <laughs> That's been something's been done in that. That's two different well, that pieces. No. Is it, yeah, it would be more uniform than that. Plastic. No, no, the different plastic. One didn't hit it, one did. It smells like smoke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how it happens. That's how that's how it happens. The plastic, it's like the four rubber feet. You get it you get an item and it's got rubber feet on the bottom. You ever seen the rubber feet go to back to what I I like to say call it they turn a petroleum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've got four feet on the bottom of something or other. And the one that's different, the one that's sitting on a piece of paper for the last four years, 
You pick it up and the paper's stuck to it, you peel it off, it looks like you stepped in gum. Yeah. But what happened here? That one was touching something, the paper set it off, and poof, turned to crud. Many times I picked up a Sega Genesis or Nintendo, Super Nintendo and found the, the one foot that's sitting on the manual or something turned to goo. Yeah. And the manual looks like you, you left <coughs> french fries on it and it just spread out petroleum. So, with that, another thing that's, that's, uh, that's kind of funny is all this stuff where they say new in box. Well, you know, there's such things as shrimp wrap machines, so you can't really believe anything you see. In fact, you really shouldn't believe everything you see, because some of you have actually seen this before here, but... Yep. <laughs> 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 Don't believe everything you, you, you read, because... It's tape to tape a Somehow, something if it exi exists out there, as some what is it used to say? Somebody said if it exists out there, I probably had it. And mm -hmm. it was the Stavros I was talking to. And I we're, on the, we're on IRC, and I said, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and then I'm talking about paint. They were talking about the color of Apple, of uh, the Apple products, and I whipped out a can of, apple of spray paint that is specifically bought by Apple with the right color codes on it. Now, talking about spray paint, okay, I'll, I'll uh, take that, use that opportunity to uh, switch to a different, to a different thing here. Okay, the original 2 Plus and uh, 2E, basically the original Apple II models were all painted. Cases were, were uh, injection pressure molded and then uh, painted the beige color. So the, color yeah. the black, uh, so these these computers will basically never yellow. They can't because it's paint. They'll scratch, they won't yellow. The uh, Bell and Howell is the same computer painted black. The plastic underneath is actually, the earlier ones actually are black already. They started out black, they got put primer on them. The later ones are lighter colored. And uh, so the original 2E, for about the first 500,000, used the same type of case as the, uh, as, the two, as the 2, which was difference, in, difference being, you don't have the solid wall here. It's about a quarter inch thick, and <clears throat> you can stand on the things. And <laughs> so, let's see here. Somebody list this on eBay. Rare, rare. Yeah. Super rare. Why is it rare? Well, let's see. It's got a two plus. It's got a. It's got a, it's got a two lid. Well, oh wait. That's a, no, no. It's a prototype because see, they, they modified this one into a two e. Yeah. <laughs> it's no box. Yeah. Two e prototype. And then we open it up and look. And go, well, let's see. Okay, is this a new, is this the right motherboard? Well, it's 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 never been used. Gee, the motherboard says copyright 1986 on it. When did this come out? It's in the original case. It's 1982. Mm -hmm. So, things to look for. If you've got an authentic machine and you want to know if it's, you know, if you want to, somebody's trying to tell you something's authentic or not, things I'll start looking for, you know, we've already gone over. You see things like the rubber band on the cable, things like uh, the monitor cable, the, the power cable isn't, isn't twisted up, doesn't have nice elbows in it. Sure, if it's new in box, something like that, you're, you're probably going to open the box and lift it out, but you really shouldn't take the plastic off. I tend to open boxes, look at the plastic, and I can tell if it's been folded and refolded. You know that what it looks like when they, when they stuck it in there. So, looking at a motherboard, for example, the, the, uh, the IC chips, most everything's got date codes all over it. Serial numbers and whatnot. Does the, does the motherboard say 1982 or 1984? Is it an older 2E? It really should say 1982. The dealer serviced it. It's not the original board anymore. And then if you look around on the IC chips, you'll see you'll see numbers. They're usually four-digit numbers. 8250, for example. 8248. And 8244A. So what do you think that means? The year and the number. Yeah. Basically, it's the year and the week. And 
even at the even at the turn of the century, they just continued it on. You know, figure that'll work for about a hundred years because we haven't hundred years from now they're not going to go. It's, that says eighty two forty eight. That's only a week old. We haven't made those things in a hundred years with those shit legs hanging off of them like that. I did look at it and think it was a vacuum tube in a, in a, in a black box. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, so you look around at the motherboard, you're actually looking for some tarnishing. If you see tarnishing on it, it's been used. Tarnishing, and by the way, Tarnex, that stuff on TV, that actually works really darn well on IC chips. About, it's about all it works on, I think. But um, if the board's got some tarnishing on it, it's got a little bit of dust on it, it's been used. It didn't get that way in the box. If they're brand new, it might have a different type of tarnishing on it. It might have a gray kind of graphite look as opposed to a black charcoal look because of the, uh, the same thing, the metal kind of reacted. Yeah. But it, still. And another telltale sign is when you push all that stuff in, yeah, I'm sitting here doing and bending the heck out of this thing. Most people are going, oh, my God. Well, these things are resilient. There's no ceramics on this. There isn't any uh, hybrids. Hybrids are really thin uh, ceramic. They're usually about the size of this. And if you look at the back of the 2C, there's one near the video port. So those I wouldn't be bending because those actually snap in half. But no, if, if it's a brand new board, service part, it's not going to make all this creaking because it hasn't been used and had, had time to, to uh, heat, it's heat and contract, heat and contract. So this is a this is the same motherboard that's in here. This is a 2E with two RAM chips, one ROM. The manufacturing upgrade for simplicity. It's a 1986 revision board. You wouldn't find this in an older machine. Somebody would look at it. So this is a PAL tube. Because they had to add, add, had to add extra circuitry to support the video, they had to rearrange the layout. One of the biggest changes was was the slot three moved over. You ever wonder why there's a Ramworks two and a Ramworks three? They're basically the same card. Ramworks three fits in the PAL two E. Ramworks two, you got to cut a hole in that because mm -hmm. it stick out, it didn't fit. So they shortened the card up. That was the big that was the big difference there. All this stuff will be available at the vendor to look at also. <coughs> Can anybody bring anything to uh, to get looked at? Let's see what we have here. You did a pretty good job looking my stuff over. Yeah. <laughs> you missed the part. Yeah, you got the precursor to the session Friday night or Tuesday night when everybody got here. Hey, while you're grabbing that, I'd like to publicly say that I brought in a bungled Zip GS uh, trend, uh, accelerator that uh, I had no clue how to fix, and Tony figured it out, and now it's back to normal. Was it the butter chips? Awesome. Tony, what was that? Accelerator. Two dead capacitors. Totally weird, too, because capa the, the type of capacitors that go, when those go, they usually smack off, they just blow off the board, you'll hear a nice big crack. Was it short? It was totally zero down dead short. Wow. Instead of, pop it. yeah, it didn't pop it. Power that. supply was sitting there just struggling. As soon as you pull it, put the card in, turn the computer on, nothing. Nothing. Just the wind. As a matter of fact, as soon as you remove the card, you can actually see a little bit of power flow. Yeah, pull it, pull it out, and the video would show up and right die. It was like, trying to go. Yeah. Actually wow. He was down in the okay, so we have a two plus and he's in an original drive. Short drive. Yeah, and this and this has a short cable on it. Which means this they didn't do the short cables for very long on these. They kind of tried to do that, but as you can see it's not really flexible. Yeah. They, they got really rotten feedback on it. Yeah. Even the second drive, like you can't do anything with it. You can't put them over here. So this is actually, I will say that 
these two, these two do go together. And uh, looking at the, you know, if I opened it up, we'd look at the date codes on that. But serial number 347,683. It's plausible. That was about the right error for that. And uh, my sister got well, this moves. So yeah, and about 300,000. We'll put this into the you know first couple of years of the of the two plus. Okay. So we're, and then now we're looking at the drive controller 7927, 7926, 7948. So this drive controller probably got bought in the spring of 1980 because they didn't. This stuff didn't sit on shelves very long back then. Probably three or four months. I found that even when I was when I was building hardware, if I bought ICs now and I got stuff that I had to wait to come from the factory, the date codes on them were still no newer than three to four or five weeks by the time I got them. So it was typically three months on date codes for the stuff to get to get to market. And this has a uh, Got a non-Apple 16K card. Microtech was Microtech was one of the companies that actually made a fair amount of uh, peripherals, printer cards, memory cards, video, uh, RGB cards. They tended to ship their boxes. They, they tended to ship their products in uh, styrofoam or foam rubber lined boxes that folded like a like a U around it, and then they slide a sleeve over it with black with with colored cubes on it. Usually said Microtech on the side. There isn't one in here, and if you probably find one, it's what it looks like. Yeah. Was it was a guy on IRC? He, he, he describes a disk drive by one cable. By the, I said, has it got a rainbow cable? He said it had a rainbow cable. I said, does it have a duckbill mouth? <laughs> and said, yeah. And he goes, that's a Suka drive. He goes, how did you know? <laughs> there aren't very many like that. No. This is the, this is an original Apple joystick. Somebody actually had a question yesterday. Or on Tuesday about the same thing it was kind of funny. They said, "What? They come to me and go. What is this?" Because <laughs> it was made close to the two plus. So they yeah, but this computer doesn't have the uh, the, uh, the RF shielding. The they added that a little later. It does have the UL logo, the UL certification that Bell and Howell was sought after to get to get these things in the schools, but I'm pretty sure that Bell and Howe was really used because they had the they had the lines in schools, the representatives, the, the uh, purchasing power and everything already. But this is a little later on. It says here, this equipment is manufactured pursuant to a waiver of FCC rules, Part 15, Subpart J. The waiver went away shortly after this. They got there's too many of these out there. You plug them in. You could get with some of the RF modulators that were being sold. You could get it on channel three and four. Without the cable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's wireless. Yeah. <laughs> they were ahead of their time. That was wireless. We had to get cable because every time we were using the computer. It took out the TV, yes. yep. Exactly. That's that why. Is, not with that computer, but it was a tool. How far yeah. away was the computer from the TV? It was in the next room. So it wasn't real close. No, <laughs> no so that, that's why all that went out the window. They said, you know what, we've got to control all this. And this doesn't have any spray inside. And if you look on these, okay. usually. I did, see a, I did clean off the, take out and clean out the keyboard last year because the keys weren't working. Did it, did it help? Oh, yeah. This actually has the good keyboard in it with the real switches on it. This is a, okay. these, are, these are repairable switches versus the one that's a uh, solid plastic piece. One switch is bad. The only way to really try to fix it is take the cap off, put alcohol on it, on the on the shaft, let it drip down, and maybe it comes back to life, maybe it doesn't. Otherwise, you've got to take the bottom off and expose all the copper, and you might as well clean them all and watch about six movies. I've done that. It's a horror yeah. story. But if you, this is a stiff reset key, isn't it? It's, still, yeah, it's, it's got a spring it's, under it. It's got a spring under it. Okay. And then the switch, that, the switch that lets it be by itself or not. Oh, so control reset. Yeah. Okay. And some of these weren't were actually hardwired to where the reset was only by itself, which is you've got to be kidding me. Because you can just oops. That's why the that's why it's spring. Spring is yeah. why you added a spring or a little O ring or whatever. Yeah. You put an O ring under there. And see the spring. And the spring is actually stronger than the rest of the keys. Yeah. Because yeah. it wants it. They don't want it. It's very hard to push that down because yeah. you're part of resistance. 
So if you add control to it, then it takes care of that problem where you actually have to really want to do that. So looking at this, it's got a power supply that uh, is twice the serial number of the computer. I don't really remember how the power supplies worked, but I don't think they started out at a low number either. I think that by, as they changed vendors, they might have jumped around. But the power supply looks looks uh, vintage for the era. The, bo the board actually says 8105 at the back in the, in the uh, spot back here. Now the earliest ones, quite haven't, haven't quite figured this out yet, but I think the earliest ones actually were numbered sequentially. Yeah. At some point they switched over to the year and month, or the year and week. And uh, looking at this, 8105, and what I would say, actually looking at the date codes on here, 1980 and 011. Sometimes they don't use the first digit. So this, like lot, some of these RAM chips, they just say 011. So it would be typically 1980. You got to put some deductive reasoning into this. 1980, week 11. <coughs> so the drive controller has stuff that's much older. Here's another chip, 8122. Okay, so that puts it in the middle of 1981. But the board is 8105. So was it serviced? Was the board was the blank board sitting around for a while? When did they put the number on them? Nobody knows. Did they actually buy it or just buy it later? Yeah. So it's it's uh, and again this is also back when they actually used to service these things. You might bring it in, they might swap a bunch of chips on it. The dealers had drawers full of chips. But other than that. The case is in really nice shape. It's a nice. It's it isn't really scratched up. Doesn't have any gouges on it. And uh, actually, it's got you know a little bit up here where the monitor sits. But this is a painted machine. Now, looking at the Apple III, for example, I have I, I didn't find any recently, but on eBay I have seen restored, originally uh, repainted and restored in the, in the original factory that did it. Somebody selling Apple III plastics keyboard bezels. I had the Price is Right buzzer thing. I pushed the doo 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 because they never painted any Apple III. That stuff was all injection molded with the same styling as this and even the same thickness, but it was all injection molded with the right pigment and the color. <coughs> Restoring it using the paint so it looks right is another thing. I, I can, um, I, I've been to factories that did plastic mold injection, and back in the early days, you remember like 80 model cars, they didn't know how to do the coloring in the plastic, so you saw a lot of cars that faded out and mm -hmm. stuff like that, where as newer cars, they got better at it, and, and so that's the difference. They learned to actually put the color in it better. Um, that's probably why they painted it to start. Um, yeah, that's... Hey, hey, you might want to mention, like, Big twos versus two pluses you see on yeah. Days. And I such that I I had hoped to bring the right clone. I didn't. Um, again, looking at all this, there's a lot of clones out there. When you look, when you open up something like that, and you look and you go, it just doesn't look quite right. Probably isn't. Um, this is a good example. This clone is a good example of. Uh, they didn't try to make it look like. One. And yeah, it's a little fun to open to. The board on this is actually nice and compact. It's hardly it hardly resembles an Apple II. Then the giveaway when I saw it in the thrift store for ten bucks and I picked it up and just bought it is well, I knew that was an Apple II uh, microside disc controller. I mean. You know, I can tell you that you know that's got to be an Apple II card. Just looking at the the slant on it, and this clone is interesting. I haven't actually not fired this up, so I'm not exactly sure. But it says back here, Intertech System Four. It has an FCC ID number. The FCC ID number we looked up a few nights ago. Does it match it? It matches a computer from Korea. Issued in 1984, and the company has a whole bunch of others, mostly PC products, from in a, into the early 90s. So now you're down to the question of 
what bias do they use? And yeah, so right. look at this. Look back here, we say system four. But it was meant for the US market. Mark 110, 60 hertz. And uh, this is one of these chrome stickers that look at, actually, you see how that sticker is now turning to shiny? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit of oxidation on the sticker, even. The glue came through, but the stickers are really shiny. So looking at this one, date code wise, numbers are kind of hidden in here. 367, which okay, so there isn't 67 weeks in anything. 8331. Another 8331. So I figure this is a you know 8384. You know how long it takes things to get the market again? Three, six months. The FCC ID issue, the FCC number was granted on this February of 2004. Uh, 1984. So that puts it in the, in the right era. If you open up, uh, there's a lot of hardware also. I wish this is where I wish I had examples. I might have some stuff during the vendor fair. But when you look at these boards, traces running back and forth, usually on one side of the motherboard, they go one direction, the other side, they go the other way, primarily. And Apple products. Basically, stuff is designed, well-intentioned, in a proper environment. The traces tend to run with nice, clean angles. 45 degrees, 90 degrees. 90 degrees are, are odd. And a lot of engineers don't like 90 degree angles. They, they say that's a nasty way to do it. Yeah. It's also not an efficient way to do it. But you can get a lot more around a corner if you sleek them. So 90, uh, 45 degree, even less, <coughs> looks nice. But when you see the clones, the lines just kind of snake and run. And if they need to get over here, they'll get over there eventually. And it's kind of cool because you look at that, and like the Franklin is a good example. Franklin, the motherboard is the same basic layout as a 2 Plus, except it's almost a third bigger. Why? And they probably drew it by hand. They didn't want to deal with getting too tight. They just took it, put it up on a board, traced the thing, made it bigger, moved this stuff around, and, and had it done. So a lot of these clone cards, for example, so this is actually some good stuff here. The ton of Videx 80 column cards. Videx was one of the most cloned card ever. That, the Grappler Plus, and the Super Serial card. The Super Serial cards that were here, I think there's still some in the bucket upstairs. They're oh. all gone. They're gone. Everybody discovered the 6551s. <laughs> no, they were. Uh, yeah. They were scared from the Bluetooth. Party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at those, you see the trace, the trace layout versus a real serial card. It's a little different. So. Uh, Tony, on the disk two controller cards, mm -hmm. they had 13 sector cards that had to be jumped to the 16. They have 13 and six. What version or time frame is that? The time frame of that is in the 79 era. 78, early 78, 79. They're, to find a 13 sector card, you, you, you know, and I've actually not seen one in quite some time. And most of them have been changed. So you can tell by looking at the at the prom values. I don't have the prom numbers for the uh, 13 sector handy, but if you look at the two, <coughs> it was just so a software change, right? Yeah, yeah just a software yeah. change. You just change two proms, and that's it. The disk drive is the same drive. Yeah, I got mine originally with 13 sector, and about a week later, I got the Language card with the 16 second one. And incidentally, like you said, you yelled out, don't plug that in wrong. This is one of the most yeah, one of the most common screw ups right here is people will oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that and I did it one one row off. Yes. And then they plug it in or they'll do it like this. They'll even try to run it like that. <laughs> but it gets the whole row. I put it when I did it when I did it without looking, I did it. One row, off, one row off, and I did it purposely like this just to show that it's not even on all the way because it's off one pin, one set. Very common. I've seen it. I People, saw it back in the day. <laughs> okay, this really wants to go on like this. It just looks so easy to do it like that, right? 
really does. It wants to stay there. It wants to fit. People will sit there and do this. I put that on the other way, and I'm sitting here struggling with it, going, that's, that's, that's good. That's really, really, really tight. It's going to fit really well. It's going to work real well. They'll plug that right in, and they'll just hear the fireworks. Boss's computer had an oversized case. There was more room behind the board than was needed. You can put the board in backwards. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Exactly. I had somebody do that with a focus card because they got it <coughs> and didn't want the uh, CFFA portion of it. Or the CFFA portion. The CF portion of it. They wanted to get it themselves. They go, I can get it cheaper, whatever the heck the mentality was. Well, they plugged the thing in. And he writes, he says, well, it doesn't work. In fact, my whole computer doesn't work anymore. So what'd you do? He says, well, I put it in the other way because it wouldn't touch the RAM card. <laughs> Where did you think the storage was? Well, I just thought it was built in. Okay. Had another in the, in the uh, Alltech days. Somebody bought focus drive controller only, metal rails drive only, uh, SCSI two and a half inch drives, IDE two and a half inch drives. Very similar pin count, fifty to forty four. They are very, very. The form factor is very darn close. In fact, a lousy cable will fit on either drive because the amount of pins from end to end is the same space. There's a bigger gap in the middle. The key, there's a keyway missing, but some cables don't have the, pin, the, the knockout pins. Okay. The biggest difference between SCSI and IDE is the position of the mounting holes. Unlike all these floppy drives, they all had four holes down here. They all had four on the sides. They all were in the same place, three and a half, five and a quarter, half height, full height, Hard drives, they all fit in the same in the same bay. The hard drives had the hole slid float slightly further back in some cases so that they were designed to sit behind the face only until you put the bezel on. Would it stick through? So you could either have no bezel or whatnot. But the hard the uh, three the two and a half inch hard drives changed the mounting <coughs> physically so that you wouldn't bolt an IDE into a SCSI and a SCSI into an IDE. That didn't stop this guy. <laughs> Metal rails, sixteenth of an inch thick, fairly hard to bend. I got the card back with a drive attached saying it couldn't get it to work. <clears throat> sent it back. I mean, I, I wouldn't have sent it back. If I did something this stupid, I wouldn't have sent it back. The whole thing was black. Ooh. Three capacitors went off, so I got those nice big tamil capacitors on there. They just went off and smoked. Probably looked like road flares. Whole, the whole computer had to be black inside. They sent it back. They took vice grips and things, and actually bent the metal rails like accordion style to compress them to get the holes to line up and offset it a little bit to get the drive to line up on the card. Wow. And the drive has 50 pins, the, the other one has 44, so then, well, let's see, which, which direction, which side should I not use? <laughs> Shoved it on. I, I would have loved to have been there. So was it your fault because it didn't work? I don't remember that actually, but no, I think I. I, I mean, he he didn't say. No, no, no. He sold me a crappy car. No, 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 no. He just said I couldn't get it to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People will do strange things, just like listing a monitor that looks like it got it got rescued from Hurricane Katrina. Uh -huh. You know, talk about uh, cars being resold somewhere else. You know where some of this computer equipment's been. But on the same note, the stuff is very resilient. They can take a lot. Yeah. You know, short of. Sewer is backing up in the basement. I won't touch that. Stuff getting flooded and whatnot. Uh, capacitors tend to, to leak out. The leads on capacitor on radio on uh, these type of capacitors for some reason tend to dissolve if it's in the water for a couple weeks. They'll spit out garbage. You might get some rust. But if you took this board, stuck it in rainwater, it wasn't acid rain, or even mineral. If you stuck it in mineral-free water for a while, nothing's going to happen to it. Take it out. Dry it, put it in the top rack of a dish dry, dishwasher. It's going to work again as soon as you reseed yeah. it. But if you put uh, this thing gets cruddy water on it, I might take the pressure washer to it if it wasn't long. But no, this this stuff generally works. I'm not going to do anything to it. What's it going to do? What's it going to get inside? Everything here is sealed and solid. I, I had a customer that had equipment and leaked the roof leaked on their equipment, but it, it would have been like a week later. And they seen signs of the root damage, and they're like, oh, this, the computer's ruined. So how long ago was it? A week ago, and we checked, no water in it, and we turned it off. Yeah. 
James Oldjohn's uh, old apple twoies that were buried in a junkyard that were actually a grass grade out of the motherboard <laughs> <laughs> and refurbished them and they worked. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> now, other things, real quick, and I'll close on this. Another thing sometimes you'll see on eBay is uh, pay attention to stuff. Okay? Rare. <laughs> Somebody might actually say that. You might look at that and go, <clears throat> Which one is it? That is rare. 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 That one actually rare. is. What's missing? Cable. <coughs> that uses the same cable as a duo disc. That uses the same cable as a duo disc. Exactly. Along the same lines, you remember when all that came out? It was duo disc and unit disc and whatnot. And everybody goes, Why is it called a duo disc? Because you still could buy these. If you wanted to, usually you got this for a while. Okay. Because the product line had been intended to have a Unidisc three and a half, they do a disc three and a half. Um. <laughs> and the Unidisc five and a quarter, and they do a disc five and a quarter. But all would use the same cable. Notice the back of this doesn't say anything about an Apple II anymore. It says connect only to specified Apple computer or disk drive. The Apple III uses a 25 or 26 pin header in the back. The 3 Plus uses a 25 pin. Coincidentally, it's the same as the Duo Disk pinout, minus the, the lines that are not needed. The Duo Disk works on a 3 with a proper cable. You get drives two and three on a duo on a, on a three is one, two, and three on the inside. This would then have been designed to be all of this was daisy chainable. So you'd have the disk drive and the proper cable for the host computer. At the point of the maturing of the three and a half, they gave up on a 25 pin, decided they were going going with 20, and this is how it was going to be. So it never happened here. But the early write-ups of this had the same setup, except that since this needed its own controller card, in the end they went with the 19 pin. The, 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 the Leron card would have gone inside the 3 as well. They would have been on separate buses, but the FileWare Twiggy drive, which was in the Lisa that was going to be designed for the 3 as well and the 2, would have had 25 pin. And all of this would have gone on the same controller daisy chain. <coughs> That's not a Twiggy drive. That's not a Twiggy drive. No. What, what was it called? This is just a do uh, yeah. So it is a unit disk. You could use it on Apple too. Yeah, I have the I have the okay. cable. For it. You put a do disk cable on here, it works. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> if you ever open one of these release ones, you still see the second DB25 hole punched out in here. First one is changed to 19 pin by virtue of an addition of a piece of metal. If you take the metal out, you still see two 25 pin holes back there. They didn't bother changing the inside, they just left it. This came, we used to offer $69 to swap a duo disc at Alltech. Mail in your old one, get it back, get back another one. I just would, when I got a big enough stack, I'd, I'd redo more. Sort of like I do the three and a half inch drives. I used to redo these. And people used to like the word got around and said, when they do them, they work. Because a lot of these got a bad rap originally. Biggest problem with these is when you put this back together, if you take it apart, you want to loosen these screws, put the mechanism in, put the door down, pull on it. Yeah, I'll have to fix that. Pull on it forward and then tighten it back. Because now the drawer will actually lift all the way up and you get the drive, you get the disc in. Didn't know those come off. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't, it didn't break, it just popped they out. Don't. <laughs> it didn't break. Nothing's broken on it. No, it's a... Anyway, the. Uh... That's like that. What is it? That's like a doorless floppy. <laughs> so, yeah, the auto eject one. That's it. There we go. So uh, I lost my th I lost my thought on it. But anyway, that um, <laughs> kind of startled me too. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, 
So they sent, so sometimes people would send two uni disks. Send back a dual disk. And they put a note in it. So you can send me a, you can send me a single unit. I like it on the monitor anyway. So box comes in, it's got two of these in it. With another one of those notes. Please send me back a, a duo instead. And they had this. Oh. I opened it up, I looked at it, and just put them on the shelf, but then I noticed something. I said, there's an extra cable in that pile. They the, sent the cable, huh? Yeah, they sent the, the interlink cable and two single cables. Uh -huh. And the and the twenty-five to twenty-five to go between them. So that was like they had the cable plugged into one, another one going to the other drive, and then the other one plugged. So they had two, two ends on it. Yeah. But they're connected together. So what the heck is that? So I didn't put those into the pile for servicing. I just put that on, on the other side of the benches. I'm taking those with me. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah that got sent to me for exchange. The places things come from. It's really strange. Don't write. Don't necessarily write off what you. What somebody says. Totally off. Totally not computer stuff. But I was looking for another item. And uh, the label. I was looking for for a flight jacket one time on there. And it says not Nomex. Blah blah blah. Something else. The label. The actual item. Says 100% Aramid something other whatever the heck it is which is really Nomex. Yeah. But apparently the, the seller did their research and said, nope, this one's not Nomex, so I have to list it. I'm going to be truthful. But they took a picture of the actual item. I looked, no, well, I know the picture is what it is. Mm -hmm. So I got that one for cheap because they said it wasn't what it was, but it was because they listed the right picture. They didn't take somebody else's picture. <laughs> and I based that on looking at it, and I said, I can't find this picture in anybody else's auction. Everybody else, the other auction, this guy's this guy's listing, now I've got the same carpet in the background. This probably guy took, probably took this picture. So yeah, I just, I figured I'd gamble on it. And it was what it was. It was exactly what he said it was. It was not because it didn't print it, but it was. So, always psychoanalyze, put a little deductive reasoning into what's there. If it doesn't look right, probably isn't. But there's always more than what meets the eye. Back in the early days of eBay, you could um, misspell things like Apple and get things for lower prices. Yeah, another thing is if you see something that's that's uh, misspelled and you really want it, and you're one of those that sits and waits, you know, get a buck on it, something like that, lock it. Got, the seller's got to reverse your auction. You gotta reverse your bid. They don't want it. it's too much work. It's a lot of pain in the butt. Yeah. Just bid them. You're either gonna get it or not. But. It's looking for LLE often brings up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oddly, people, people and, do that and it looks like LLE. And, and book and drive. Mm -hmm. Because 800 k looks like book if you're drunk. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have found new in box 800 k drives because I looked for book drive. Well, a few times. <laughs> 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 oh, any other questions? When can we see the Mark Twain? It's been out all week. I'll bring it out. It'll be out during the exhibit hall. I gotta put it back together. <laughs> can that joystick be fixed? Um, most likely. The buttons simply don't work at all. This is the one on eBay. Uh oh, is this what the box really says? Yes. <laughs> so he's got here two e test equipment. You probably saw. Did the guy open the box, or did you just see this box random like this? Just like that. Didn't even show you what was in it. <laughs> so, so yeah, okay, I've got a bid on this to see what the heck. This is worth a gamble. So we open that up and. Out comes a. Well, oh, gee, that's funny. How the heck are you supposed to put that in a computer? <laughs> and get the lid back on. That means it must not meant it's not meant to be in there in the first place. You can't close that one up, can you? No, it's just there for testing. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Cool. That's awesome. So how this works is uh, designed for hundreds of insertions. Yeah. 
So we've got here a functional test card. So does that mean that the test card is functional? <laughs> yeah. What this appears to be is it's got a uh, it's got the two cassette the cassette port, the joystick port, monitor port. Again, now look at that. It's got a BNC connector. That's a really that's a really uh, robust connector. Meant for lots of insertions, lots of use. Put a cable on there. I'm going to figure that between this and the burn-in connector on the front, if the motherboard isn't functioning, this can push back function towards the motherboard. If the video and output and joystick and whatnot aren't going, they can go through here. So now they can plug this in, light the motherboard up with stuff hooked up to this, and move this between slots. The two will talk to each other through software and determine the functionality of the board or isolate the problem. And because of the handles, you can, you can pull it out and push in hot. No. I don't, no. I don't, I won't say no. hot, no. but okay. I say this is, but, but, okay. it, but this well, is it. Well, so you'd be on the board a machine yeah, be on, a, machine's on a, on a rolling belt in front of you. Yeah. And I've heard you can take cards out or push them in if you're If you careful. put them straight down in, yeah. in I my high I school, I wouldn't want to mess with it. But. In my high school era, I did exactly that. You know, Why would you want it? Because I was trying to break the computer. <laughs> so I sat there and lifted it up and up. And then, but I did it exactly down the center, and it didn't work. But this is this is very easy to do. Typically, the machines are not facing the user up on the uh, assembly line. And you put that in, you get that right out. And that, for a factory worker doing that, or an assembly line person, that's much easier on the hands. Yeah. yeah. These are on the board, too. Yeah. And further back that up, yep, let's see if you can get, uh, can oh, this is interesting. Back in the days when they used to actually put uh, put uh, paperwork with everything so you knew what you were getting. So which leads me to believe that this was actually meant to be in the field and possibly a location that had many units on hand or that would do repair isolation and whatnot before they sent the stuff back to Apple. We actually had level two and level three people in the field. If you had a university with a thousand units on site, it paid to have somebody go to school. Yeah, my wife was level two. Floppy disk is in there being shielded from from a nuclear blast. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I was saying, yeah, it's a, forensically looking through all that, here we got. Uh, same, typical cassette cable, video cable for that, <coughs> joystick. Maybe you connect this stuff back to the uh, back of the motherboard, possibly, when you run the software. So it'll compare function, have loop back. There's a uh, jumper cable in here that has an empty, unlabeled slot, which happens to be 16 pins, so I'd fathom that that probably goes in the joystick connector. I have no, this isn't this isn't a setup. I've never seen this. Only I've seen a few pictures of it. But looks like a, a uh, joystick converter based on the pinout. Looks familiar. You plug that in there, and 100% uh, original OEM type. Uh, yeah, yeah. No one's ever, there's your rear cable right there. That's never been opened up unless somebody snuck it through this little knife hole right here. Yeah, this is kind of this is kind of cool. You know, I could see that, that floppy being in a shielded bag if it was used in, like, in a hospital or something because a lot of magnetic equipment will just fry the, the discs. Yeah, there was, and this yeah. stuff made its way into nuclear power plants and yeah. and uh, yeah. engineering facilities yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Strange yeah. places yeah. you never would imagine for where they would do special mods to the motherboard, set things up, uh, set things up on demand for the customer. So if I'm looking on eBay and I see something like this, if this guy had opened the box, he might have gotten, you might not have had this. Again, that's a great another another great example of don't judge by what you see. Yeah, because even looking at that, going, okay, what can possibly be in there? Even if it has the the uh, the original test card that sticks up with the red handle on it with the ROMs on it, and it's in this box, I recognize this box as a box as a type of box that came from Apple. At the, at the time with their larger products in it might have paperwork in it so I'm going to gamble especially if it's 50 bucks or whatever I might you know what as long as they as long as they got decent feedback and they promise there's something Apple II in it I'm probably going to buy it cool. 
that is a community. Now, would there be any uh, value to the community uh, uh, with that as far as cloning it or doing something with it for any diagnostic? At this day and age, pretty specialized. So you, you, it's cool to document it and look at it, but yeah, you're you don't repair anything anymore. And in fact, even repairing them, there's so much documentation out there. Plus, the people who do it have so much experience. You turn it on, you can look at it. And you know, I think I know what's wrong with that. I think what area I know is wrong. And then you're gonna look at it and you go, okay, well, I know what's right. So if I have another one that needs this, I'm gonna be that's become a hanger queen. I'm gonna start plucking. I'm not gonna bother. So yeah, would I would I want to take this and, and desolder the whole thing to uh, do another one? Probably not. Could you do it without it? Yeah, you could pop chips out and sit there and do it, but is now is it worth the effort? There's not a real big need for something like that. But what we're doing yeah. for is part. Yeah, oh, it's sort of yeah. super cool. <laughs> it's on the trump card. Yeah. <laughs> it's been sitting on a shelf for a long time. It's one of these that writes a, <clears throat> writes a bubbly E. Must be a sophisticated old guy. <laughs> General Electric E. <laughs> so, anybody else got questions? Anything else? We're almost running into lunch probably. Yeah, yeah. there we are. Almost twelve. My stomach says so. Yeah. Did you answer Martin's question about her wisdom? Oh yeah. Um, it's not normal screws on the back. No. Oh, they're in there. But what I would do with this is, um, I think these are sealed units. Uh, physically, they sound like they're working. Okay. Uh, alcohol. Dip alcohol. Let it go in there, and then. But yeah, this I think it'll be fixed. If we take it apart and look, the switches might be disassemblable. And using uh, picks, take it apart and see if they work. It was awfully dusty. Sometimes just after a while of doing this, this worked. Yes, that Yeah. Yeah, it could be that the buttons actually work and maybe there's a break in the cable. Yeah, this looks pretty. All the pins. I know, I know, but you know. Yeah. It could be at the connector, you know, you can't see, or <laughs> you could do a continuity test, you know, to test the switches at the wires and at the switch itself. And <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I'd, you're I'd, talking. I'd open it. a lot of work for a $5 joystick. I'd open it. And I know, I hear that you thought up and down. I'm going to have to pull out my closet pull. I would open it and just stick in, and cross the wires on the bottom of the switch and then see if it works, too. I had no idea. That it then you know the wire's good. I got that one, that, that funky curve one. Great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony.